Well, I have to say good morning, because it's 11.59 a.m., <laughs> but it's going to be noon in just a couple of seconds. Hello, everyone. Ron Nicoletti here with Samantha Perry. Of course, we'll be joined by Brian Nano throughout the afternoon. And then you see our three racetracks. Uh, boy, it is going to be one warm day here in South Florida. But look at those blue skies, Samantha. It is beautiful. That's the beauty of living in South Florida is although the heat could almost burn you, uh, or it does, most people so wear your SPF, uh, but it's still just, it's so beautiful. Nothing like it. Yeah, it's the best. And, you know, in the morning when you get that 75 degrees and stuff, it's pretty darn good. we got <laughs> helicopters flying over. we got it all today. we got it all. So we got a fast main track. we got a firm turf course. Of course, we got the all-weather tapita throughout the afternoon. And we'll see how things play out there throughout the day. Let's check out what's going on with the Rainbow Six situation. Yeah. I think it's 300000 Yeah, $300,000 estimated pool. So we'll see how how that works out and uh, uh, races four through nine today. Yes, and you've got the winning ticket. I got the winning ticket, which <laughs> we'll have later on. We got lots of tickets today. Uh, we have the master of tickets, Brian, will be uh, giving us tickets throughout the afternoon. So we took care of all early business. And why? Let's do. Let's show an early pick five let's ticket. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it right now. We'll get this thing rolling, and here you're going to see it's going to pop up. And you see, uh, Brian's got a twenty-two dollar and fifty cent ticket. Three deep. We'll talk about the opener and race number two. He's got the logical ones there. The four, eight, and nine. We had some scratches in that race. I know I lost my top pick uh, with that and springs he's singling the two in race number three. Ah, oh, wow that's pretty good i didn't have that one up there that's a good single and in the fourth race he's got the number four uh we got another uh, number six excuse me and that is far and few and lots of coverage in race number five and the fourth and fifth samantha of course you know a part of the rainbow six they are indeed so it's good if brian were hypothetically going to play this he would have a single to kick it off yeah there you go so let's see how this plays out in the first race I would like to see how you figured it out. <laughs> and we'll start with your whip. Oh, look at this. Same Cold try. try. <laughs> Cold try. Well, for sure, it's a winner. Yeah, Senator Girl looks like logical on the drop. Yeah, she does. Uh, the, there was a race last year on the Tapita back in October where she had – taken to the lead like 20 plus lengths in front of the field and was caught just right at the wire by her stable mate it was a huge effort you've got to get this filly out in front and when gonzalez he knows her well so hopefully you can just try to wire him yeah victor barboza winning races at a 33 yeah. percent clip he's 18 percent with his tapita runners so got positive stats current tepid favorite right now co-favorite mm -hmm. is the eight tis Evan, who's uh has her claiming tech sliced in half this afternoon and she faced a uh, tougher and she flattened out in that race a little bit. Yeah, she's going to try two turns on the Tapita for the first time, which I feel like is significant, Ron, because sprinting on the Tapita is, is not going to be her thing, and that's all she's done in the past. So I think she can improve. And you got Starlet, the Safi, who's uh, dropping to this level, stretching out to the mile 70 with blinkers added. Hoping it looks like this one might try and steal it on the front end. Yeah, I think you, that's you the would plan. So. You would think it's yep. the plan in there. So uh, the logical three in there, you know, mix them around. We'll see how. Got a lot of time before the first race starts, so yes. the odds will definitely be yeah. changing. Now, race number two this afternoon is seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is three year olds and up, and we do have three scratches. I yep. can't believe they scratch out of turf races. Scratch the three Highland Peak, the five Grand Tower, and my tip pick in that race was number 6,000 springs and we have a pick four ticket too here well tropical turf pick tropical three. turf and pick, three, pick four but and pick four, yeah. we'll just do the tropical turf pick three and i'm starting off with a single i did lose my my top pick as you did ron but this one looks like the only other one here uh race number five this is a good one uh, allowance optional claimers i do have the seven on top that's romantic story we've got a replay there and in race nine the finale today to end your holiday weekend i do have the six on top that is Cleopatra's Nile. I'm so glad you used the four horse in race number five. That one, eight to one on the morning line. I ah, think that horse yes. is going to run exceptionally well today for Shinadawa Barbu. Yes, that was good. Wow. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Getting back to the second race four, we got this with the scratch. Looks like the one to beat. And this is where you start in your tropical turn. Now, what about the pick four? We'll run into that right now and see what that looks okay. like. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what Brian did here. I'm sure it is just a, a run back of the pick five as he usually does. You have yeah. 750 there. So Seven, punch it a couple of times. Yeah, punch it a couple of times. He's got those two singles. I didn't have that horse in the third race yeah. at all. Now we'll go back to the second yes. race with the number four. We got this, or you got this, so uh, you started off. Well, I hope we both got <laughs> yeah. this, yeah. Uh, 
showed speed on the grass last time, at least a little semblance of it, which is a good sign. Uh, the Tapita race back in October was a decent effort, Ron. Uh, you're just looking for a horse that, you know, can semi-handle the grass here and have speed because that's going to be your biggest biggest play. Yeah, and, you know, with the scratch as a race, I think sets it up perfectly yes. for this horse. You know, I, I bumped up the number eight. Uh, I think it's Kukoi, who's dropping to the 16 level, broke slowly, really never got on track no. uh, against those career, you know, for David Fawkes. He's going to try something different today. Yeah, I think the little drop in class will help as well. I'm not a fan of race days on the grass. Only yeah. 9% with turf routes, but we see this grass, and I made this comment yesterday, too. I know you, you heard it because you listen. <laughs> uh, but uh, I had said that, you know, this grass course is just so firm that sometimes horses that, you know, maybe wouldn't like a, a softer grass course or maybe not even like the turf course, they like this one. Yeah, we were talking about XY. Yeah, uh, XY Speed. Being uh, a, you know, who loves this course. And oh, that's loves it. And in Florida, I mean, this turf course held up beautifully oh, this year. Oh, it's amazing. It yep. really, it, it really, really did. But it always leans towards speed. So right. uh, whether it's, uh, you know, January 1st or June 1st, it always gonna, you're always going to lean towards right. speed. We're going to go and flip the page and go to race number three this afternoon. And this one is a mile and 16th on the Tapita. These are claimers, Phillies three-year-olds and four, Phillies and mares four and up. Jockey change on the number two. Gray Princess make the run of Miguel Vasquez, uh, Marcos Meneses off his mounts this afternoon. And let's start it off with your number four horse in here and Grandma's Pudding. I know that's your favorite horse yeah. name. <laughs> Not a big I still fan don't understand it. Yeah, and maybe somebody's grandma made really good pudding. I hope <laughs> oh, so. Oh, I'm sure of that. Yeah. Uh, got a win last time, and it was for the non-two level. So technically, you know, she's moving up. But I just like the fact that she showed two turn speed it wasn't quick fractions but at least she got in front maybe she can do the same here yeah i went with the number eight you got a little further down she's so bearish is stretching out to the mile in the 16th on the over the speed today flaunted her speed in the tree of races going both short and long on the tampa main track We'll see what we get. We got the apprentice in we here. Do, yeah. I think it's a speed play for me. Yeah, that's what you're hoping for. This horse, uh, you know, the two turn speed at Tampa, the second quarter's picked it up a bit quick. Mm -hmm. But 0 for 10, though, on the Tapita. That worries yeah, me. Yeah, that, that, that big concern, you mm -hmm. know. He's, but this horse, you know, has speed in the. Right. You know, as we always say, not facing uh, world beaters in exactly. this bad. So you go with the four rate. So that is race number three. As mentioned once before, the number two horse will be ridden by Miguel Vasquez. That's always a good thing. And we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we will have my Rainbow mm -hmm. Six ticket. past performances with one best-in-class product you now get all three past performance formats easily switch between views access the most trusted information in horse racing with DRF all access past performances go to DRF.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today Welcome back to Gulfstream today. It is Ron. It is Samantha. I almost forgot my name there for a <laughs> brief second. I was going to say Brian and Samantha, but it's no, it's me. It's and <laughs> fourth race, we're going to go to the main track as sprint at six furlongs. These are maidens and uh, pretty nice fillies and mares, three year olds and upward. And we have no scratch and jockey change. And this with the nine race card is where the Rainbow Six. I got my normal 4320 today. We'll be talking about this race in a moment. Race number five, I, you know, I'm so glad you used simply strike and I think that course is going to run well but I got some coverage in there that was a real head scratcher for me race number six uh, lost a couple of horses in there my top pick looks tough good in there and that's Icelander and race number seven just two for me uh, with the number five on top and that is Makazan I think is a logical one there's my single big effect I like this horse now I like it a little more because there's a couple of scratches in there we got a replay for that horse and my long shot comes in race number 
number nine. It is the number five, Seeking by the Storm, Rodolfo Garcia, awesome. Jose Morales. I love it. Yeah, so we've got it. And 43.20 for me, and uh, we'll see how that plays out this afternoon. But uh, we got, uh, did you start it off with the four-cart girl, Sam? I did. Of course, Sam? Is that? No, <laughs> but I, I like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I was a cart girl in a, another life. That's golfing, right? Right, golfing. Okay. But you got a video. I do, yes. Okay, so this filly debuted last year and ran second, and I liked her that day. Mm -hmm. Look at this. So this is a gate work two starts back on May 12th. Boom, she breaks from the gate with two others. One of them is unraced. Uh, another one is just an average horse. She's mm -hmm. on the inside here. She just does everything so easy, mm -hmm. Ron. And this was uh, not asked by uh, at all by Man. her. And uh, she's not the best moving filly. Yeah, she's digging in. Like yeah, that it, she's. But the thing is, is fillies like this, they learn how to kind of compromise for maybe just not being very well put together. Mm. She only sold for seventy-seven thousand, but right. I liked that work at the sale um, because she worked ten flat at that sale, and she was she's athletic and she just keeps on going here. If she just breaks and does that exactly i i don't see how they're gonna beat her today yeah you know she could you know she hasn't run since october right. that was a real good work so if you want to play devil's advocate a little bit maybe you go oh they might need one type of right. thing there uh, i did go with the number six horse in here far and few and i, I just thought this was the, the logical one in this particular race now in the fernando Brea barn it's a daughter of omaha beach returns to the main track string of narrow defeats on both to peter and turf the last time the filly was on the day, she almost pulled off a 78 to 1 shocker yeah. back then. She got a 77 buyer for her efforts that day. Yeah. So that was a pretty good performance. And, and I think you got to use that. And then the number five horse, I know that you have a stat with three times, and that is Gerald Bennett, who's, of course, down from Tampa. Yeah, and you mentioned it earlier, and yeah. I just want to reiterate yeah. this is a barn that does very well at Tampa, and pay attention yeah. to him here because people aren't catching on. This is first time starters in dirt sprints. 16%. Uh, this is within the last five years. Not a very big ROI. Uh, there's a lot of unknowns with this this filly here. Now she's debuting. Uh, this is a barn that, you know, high percentage barn, 19% on the year. So 16% is pretty high for first time starters. But, you know, we're going in blind with this filly. Yeah, you know, and, and Gerald Bennett, you know, reason to dollar twenty four return investment. They bet this guy. They do. Tampa. I mean, uh, so that said, he does a great job and he's just, a, I called him the other day when the long shot that one KG veteran, which is exactly what yep. he is. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. And that's a compliment. It is. I, yeah. I didn't mean anything bad by it. So just <laughs> so you know that out there. So, and, and I, I just wanted to touch on the one a little bit. It's going to be a big price in here. Teasing is the daughter of multiple stakes when it tap rid. is back locally, turned from a, a like a six month layoff, I mm -hmm. believe, to finish the stamina tweaking fifth, going sixth for Jose D'Angelo. He's 30% with the second start back from a layoff. You're yeah. looking for a little price. Sitting up there 15 to 1. You got Melvis Gonzalez. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the 10 pound apprentice in yes. there. You might, you know, as. We always say try supers. We got it all. Stick it right. And she on. likes the the track here. Yeah. Too. And, and she's five facing three year olds. Yeah. So that's a big. Pew, yeah. Gonna go. <laughs> Just like that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Fifth race, one mile on the turf. Starter, optional claimer. In this one, Phillies three year olds, and we do have one jockey change in here on the number two. T she takes cash and make that right a Cipriano Gill. You always want to say Gill Cipriano, but I yeah, know, yeah. It's well, hey, that's his name. What are you gonna do? And you have a late pick five ticket. You want? I do. Yeah, we'll check it out here. Uh, it's a twenty-seven dollar play for me. We'll get to this race in just a moment. Race six. I do have the four on top. That is Moral Agency. Race seven. There's. Uh, my single, and that is Makazan. I get what yeah. you're doing yeah. here. I, I just hope that maybe with the, the last win mm. can just right. repeat it. Race eight, I've got my long shot, and that's the five blue slide park, but I think with the scratches, I won't. It'll be more of an average shot with six yeah. to one on the line. Right. And in the finale, the six on top, that is Cleopatra's Nile. Yeah, that looks like a tough one. We'll get does. a stat on yeah. that horse a little. I don't getting back to this fifth race this afternoon. Uh, did you start it with Romantic Story? Yeah, I did, and I'll, I'll show you why here you've got her a little further down uh she ran at tampa last time out now this race she was pressing with princess gladys the nine horse the whole time um and just kind of blew away the field here now this was a convincing win albeit it was for maiden 30 level but 
watch her gallop out because this is what I thought was significant, Ron, because she just kept going. She almost was a little green down the lane, but it's like she didn't figure it out till the end. She's got her ears pricked, a beautiful long stride. I think she's spotted perfect. And look, she just keeps she keeps on going. Yeah, she got you know, so that and people swear by the you know, that the run out afterwards. Yes. So and I agree with them. So you have to watch the races all the way yeah. through in there. I, I did go with simply striking on top of which is the number four horse in here is uh, dropping returning to the turf for a first race since finishing second on the torpedo was 25 to one that yeah. day again but here it was 75 optional claimers during january the trainer as i met the shivavanda parbu who is three for ten at the meeting very soon he's 30 yeah. percent right he's 50 percent one for two with the 61 to 180 day layoff and this thought of enticed is working well so yeah. i just added all that up and i think this horse has a shot i think and i'm so. glad you used it on your ticket yeah i am too because look this horse defeated wow lucky and wow lucky you've got seven to two on the line is going to take way more money well right. i feel like simply striking is better horse yeah so you know and then of course you knew i had to have goat on a tree on, on a tree on my ticket yeah, who faced not? better on the grass in the past is going back to the turf after becoming a, a two-time winner which is key in here yeah. when she led every step of the way to defeat only four rivals and that 35 optional claimer going a mile in the 16th under Peter. It's Safi, it's Edgar. So you got to give this right. horse another look. And uh, Goat on the Trees, good name. I like that one. It is an interesting name. <laughs> uh, I just don't know about it. Does she like the grass? I can't figure it yeah, out. Yeah. I don't really know. She ran, runs a lot better on the Tapita to me, but we'll see. Yeah, but she faced so much better. That's is a good what point. my thought yeah, was that's in, a good in that. Point. But you, you don't know until later on. Now, the sixth race this afternoon is five furlongs on the Tapita, and this one is going to be from Aiden Claimers, three and up. And we did have some scratches in here. The one Black Echo, the six Moby Warrior, one of the horses I use, and also the number 10, always dial another horse that I use here. And that's when I mentioned when I was talking about my ticket. I think now the eight horse looks strong. We got a, we got a ticket here for Brian, a late pick four. I'm going to see how he did it now with these scratches in here and he got four and eight i think that's what you got to go with yep here. i think so and he's singling mock is on as well who just seems like a logical now your rainbow you could blow it up if <laughs> that horse gets right. defeated uh race eight he's got my long shot the five blue side park and okay. big effect and in the finale just singling with the nine madikit's arrow i wonder if that's his best bet yeah, and uh, he's that, that we got a video with that yep. chicken parm, another yes. name that uh, Grandma's putting in chicken parm in the same race. I, I don't know if I can. What would you rather that. have, uh, chicken parm or Grandma's pudding? I would go with the chicken parm. Okay, fair enough. I'm Italian. There you go. You sort of, you gotta sort of do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm interested to see. Did you put? You had the four on top. I, I believe, do. Right? Yep. I scratched into the four. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I scratched into the eight. But. Okay. Yeah. Uh, drop in class here for the Jose D'Angelo Barn. I mean, a huge drop in class here. Has not done any running in the last two starts. But this is a barn that can get him going the right way. And look at the tapita work here. Now, Jose D'Angelo has horses at Palmetto's. He ships them in sometimes to work on the tapita here, oh. which I like because yeah. they just get a feel for it. She's, he's never been on the, the tapita before, so raced on it. Now he's been on it in the morning. The number eight Icelanders drop it to this level. We're talking about 12.5 on the tapita with blinkers at it. If they're taking money and failing to produce anything really mm -hmm. going five on the turf in his debut jack sisterson it's pretty solid with the surface switch about 20 yeah. percent and i think this is a logical choice and like i said i think with always dialed which was the two to one morning line favorite in there out i think the four eight or something like that yeah. you might want to throw the seven in is a big price arrow ghost yes. uh, that maybe can jump up and grab a share but i think four and eight might be the way to go after the scratches in that race so it's wide open now yeah. i feel like with this i mean it could somebody could step up and do something funky well that sounds good i like i like funky race, <laughs> race number seven one mile claimer three-year-olds and upward which have never won two races in life scratch the eight moon watch here's another horse that was eight to five on the morning yeah. line so sort of throw a little bit of a you know a wrinkle into this uh, race here and everything like that and uh, we have uh, you know who'd you end oh Makazan everybody yep. had Makazan everybody's got Makazan well the win was so impressive last time Ron I understand it was for maiden 12 fives but it's not like they're asking a lot from this horse they're putting him right in for the non-winners of two level for 8,000 perfect move here 
if he just runs the same race, he should win. You know, you always say, oh, you don't want to bet a maiden winner after, you know, uh, breaking maiden, bet him back. But this, I, I wrote my analysis, couldn't have found an easier spot to face winners. So exactly. That's the key today. Yep. And with Moon Watch out, the fav big favorite, he looks real tough in there. You know, the. You may, do you use the four, this magic moment, or the two Poseidon's myth maybe underneath? But Magazan, you singled it. Brian singled it. We'll see how that plays yeah. out in race number seven this afternoon. Uh, we'll flip the page. We'll go to race number eight. And race number eight is where I get my best bet, and here's six furlongs. And this is the first uh, leg of the coast to coast, I believe, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, I I hit it yesterday. You did? I did. Yeah, it didn't pay a lot. It kind of got a little chalky, but just just to harp on it, it it pays really well. There was like an even money winner. There was that three to two favorite we had to kick things right, off. Yeah. Mark Cassie's horse. I mean, there was a lot of favorites, and it still paid three sixty three. Wow. So That's what we try to tell them that every day. We it's, do. it's just been, it's, the payouts have been so good. Yeah. Getting back to this eight uh, race, six furlongs allowance optional came with two scratches in here of Louis the Sun King, the two and the three, Melky. So those are out. And Big Effect was my best bet. And I think you have a video you want to show of Big Effect. Yeah, this was his last race, and it was a, it was a big effort. I mean, he, uh, he just completely went ballistic on the front end look at that 45 and 2 and he paid the price now I worry so as soon as he got past he really kind of threw in the towel right. a bit and this is what I wanted to show and I get why he's your best bet man. because he's the class of this field by far but oh man he just looked like he was so gassed I wonder if he comes back from that a little bit now when he angled back out to the outside he ran on a little bit but he was tired do you think it's the distance or? yeah I thought it was the reason I, I thought it was the seven furlongs yeah. I think cutting back to six furlongs this horse is two for three at the distance and you mentioned the class and the connections that he pleased to mm -hmm. you know anything could happen when you break from the inside post right. I'll go see how it runs but I thought the seven maybe said uh oh no no, cut back to six. I just yeah, thought he, exactly. he looked that way in there. And you did go with the number five. And this is your long shot, I It believe. is, yeah. Six to one on the line, so I'm going to lose some, some points with the scratches there. But I, this horse won for a maiden $25,000 level. They claimed the horse. It was a first-time starter for Dave Fox during the championship meet, by the way. And this horse ran huge, really huge. Now, he's been to the bench since then. But what I like from these connections is they worked them from the gate leading into this race at Palm Meadows. And 48-1 and one from the gate there, that's quick because it could be hard. I mean, it, that's a, it's a heavier track, I feel like, at Palm Meadows. Um, not in any particular good or bad way. It's mm. just what it is. So that's a sharp work. Yeah, and I mean, it's best of 51 runners at yeah. the distance. So it wasn't that he was out there, you know, did two other horses. It was a whole one. Yeah, you know, big effect. I can understand the five. Uh, that's a good way to go. And then, then you, have, you got the six horse in here. Who I thought, you know, ran okay. And if you go by, it's Gerald Bennett. He's shipping his yeah. horse down for Tampa. It was 40 maidens. What do you get here? You don't really know what you're going to get. No. I mean, it was a maiden 40 race, but that was a really impressive victory. And like you said, Ron, about... Gerald Bennett I mean when he brings a horse over like this no. you know big effect he might be the best one but he might get overrun today just due to the post big effect is on the outside he might be better. yeah be better that's why I was saying you never know with that inside right. post what's going to happen there so we'll go to the last race this afternoon it's um, a mile on the turf and it is a claiming event and for Phillies and Mayors three-year-olds and up we do have a jockey change on the number three horse in here sweet sweet fantasy will be Sonny Leone and uh, we got lots going on in here we got so let's go to the replay of Chicken Parm and Brian's I think be the best bet or I know he singled in a Cat's arrow yep this is uh, them two going at it now Chicken Parm I wanted to show first because this horse did this and just kind of galloped in was in it early and then I don't know what happened <laughs> Madikit's arrow ran very well now at first looking at the form five and three quarter lengths I it's not that great but you see the way they finished and then the rider just kind of flagged the horse mm. in there was nothing really going on he just kind of just wrapped up up front there was he was beat already so what do you do uh 
this is a much easier spot. So now you went with the number six, Cleopatra's Nile, and this one's Safi Joseph, and I believe you have a stat you want to show? Yeah, I do uh, for Safi, and I, f I found this kind of interesting. This is a maiden winner last out, this on the grass here at Gulfstream. So when they've won their last race and they come back, he wins back again at a 16%. Small ROI. But this is a 26% trainer. It's hard to do, like you just mentioned yeah. about an early race. It's hard to come back and face winners. But she gets Lasix for the first time. She's been working well coming back. Maybe a new face in a field where we've seen them all. Well, I saved, I hope, the best for last. I with hope. My you were just waiting for me <laughs> to finish. <so> you <laughs> could <laughs> no, no, it's not that great. But just uh, sinking by the storm, you know, Rodolfo Garcia. And, and I just thought this horse comes off that performance against 25-2. He was on the lead. I just think this horse is going to run well. I think it's a spot where speed, uh, we mentioned this throughout the show today and mm -hmm. all, of, all week, speed is good on there. Yeah. Turning back. You know, Rodolfo Garcia, Jose Morales, I looked him up. You know, he's winning races here at 14 percent he's doing a good job yep. you know and it's a uh, uh you know daughter of get stormy so i'm taking a little bit of a speed play in the nightcap and yeah you know you can't go wrong with speed no you cannot and the second leg in the coast to coast so yeah. make sure to include this one yeah we'll see how it goes and we've been doing great samantha great a long shot the other day it was that nine horse that just yep, ran away you, from the field or oh, nine to one i think it was the four yeah, three Every day we've had, all of us have had a long shot winner this week. So, so and then we're keeping that going today. I guarantee yes. it. <laughs> so that is the nine races. Uh, we got the pick five pool already approaching 35,000. Lots of time left, but we are not done. Of course, we have the lightning round here. And I think you picked the right things to do when you with XY Speed. Boy, this horse was impressive last time out. Yeah, this is uh, three wins in a row now for this horse. And he did it a bit differently yesterday. He just kind of fell on the lead. And, you know, we were talking in the office mm. about this horse. He What a, a cool, cool horse. And I feel very well managed by Mike Lerman as well. Yeah, right. right. And he, Mike Lerman, uh, they were talking to him after. He knew. We were all amazed that this horse was close to the pace. Yeah. He usually comes in. He said, no, there's not that much speed in here. I think he'll be closer to mm -hmm. the pace. And that's exactly what happened yeah. with that race. Now, uh, the other one here that... Uh, I thought was the piece of candy yesterday I know. on the drop. I, I, you know, Octane, and boy, what did this horse run like it? Yeah, you're right. I mean, this horse really pulled one over on me. I was worried mm. about the Oaklawn mm. race coming yeah. back, but this horse really is just awesome yeah. for the Arendelle connections and Brian yeah. Cohen. Yeah, no, look at it. He's just growing off. I, you know, he just had some, tons of class. That's what it was yes. in, in the race. So, you know, and uh, Shaq Diesel, I interesting horse, runs exceptionally well when he gets Lasix, when he's in a stake. He doesn't run that yep. well. He didn't run badly there. So with that said, so uh, and then what else we got? Win for the money? Yeah, that was uh, the Cassie horse that I guess oh. everybody knew about. Oh yeah, except us, right? <laughs> I, we didn't have this horse. This horse went off at three to two, and was like n even money the whole race, yeah. pretty much. Just sat there loaded for Cassie. Yeah, I know, we made a couple of good points. We thought this was going to be like a, you a know, set up for right. going back north on the Tapita. Not to get, look at this, in hand, yeah, just a unbelievable. So, um, okay, that one beat us. <laughs> now we got Samantha's best bet today. Uh, well, we'll show the coast to coast first because we've oh, got. Oh, the, oh, oh yeah. uh, Let's show the coast to coast. Two yeah. from here, three from Santa Anita. Again, dollar minimum, fifteen percent takeout. Very, very fun. Three set. something yesterday. Three hundred and sixty-three dollars. That's like the lowest I've ever seen it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Usually, usually it's way higher. It's tough to hit, but you know this. you got you got we got you got a little bit of an uh, an edge because those two races are right here. We know what's going to happen right. in those races in Santa Most Anita. Time. You got to. Put your handicapping hat on. You know, it's funny. A lot of times I do, I miss our races and hit the Santa Anita <laughs> ones. It's I would be absolutely the opposite way. <laughs> I tell you that You'd right. You'd be surprised. But you know what? I think I'm going to play it today. I'm gonna, you should. I'm going to take a look at yeah. it. Yeah. I haven't played it yet. I'm gonna, and low 15% takeout, which is pretty cool. Huge. So now we'll get to our best bets and long shots for the afternoon. And, of course, we'll start with Samantha's best bet today. And you can see it right there. Cart girl sam three to yeah. one in race number four kick off the rainbow mine oh, that's right mm -hmm. mine is the number one horse in race eight big effect eight to five i'm not uh you know if he holds on that six furlongs he should be pretty good in there yeah. and then your long shot is in race six uh, no uh eight there eight. you go blue side park yeah and mine's in the night cap that speed play for me and it's a nine twelve to one seeking by the storm so that's how we see this uh card nine races beautiful sunday afternoon 
Got the Panthers and Rangers a little <laughs> later on. I'm not going to uh, we'll tell you what side I'm on, but I like uh, cats. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Good luck, everybody.